Hey, what's going on guys? It's JC from Most VFX here, and today we're going through M-Style 8mm for DaVinci Resolve. Let's dive into it. So once you've installed the pack from the installer, you'll want to head over to the effects tab and search for the pack name. Here's where you're going to find the five titles, 24 effects, and three transitions. And all of these work on a drag and drop basis where you'll either drag the titles onto the timeline or the effects and transitions directly onto the clips. So getting started inside the titles tab, there's one intro and four typography titles. This leader intro is your classic way to kick off a sequence with the old fashioned film roll. But how I would personally use this is by placing it at the beginning of a sequence, reversing those numbers, and then having it count down. And to do that, I'll head into the inspector tab where I can begin the customizations. First things first, if you are working on a 4K timeline, you will want to hit the 4K quality box here as this ensures the sizing and the quality is correct. Then we'll move to the top where we have these in and out points. These control the animation when the layer starts. So if I'm placing this at the beginning of a sequence, I'm actually going to turn the in point off. That way it's on frame as soon as the layer starts. Next, we have frame controls. Now this is going to control the outer border we have here. So if I uncheck this, you can see the outer border on the edge is now gone. We can change how wide and how high we want that so you can really get the look you're going for, as well as the colors. Next, we have the countdown controls. And this is what I was referring to when I was talking about the numbers going down in reverse. So here I'll click on timer reverse and you're going to see that the number's now gone from zero to four. And the reason it's at four is because this layer is just over four seconds long. But if I was to extend this layer here to eight seconds, we're going to see it goes to eight. And the same thing if I say going to two seconds. So that just makes it super easy to control. For me, I like it at three seconds, so it's not too long and you're good to go from there. Well, following on from the countdown controls, we have a bunch of different tabs that will allow you to customize this title. Now I won't dive into each and every single one of them, but a quick tip on how to know which tab controls what is just to simply open the tab and then just toggle on and off. So you can see what this target controls. Another one, if you were to go to the filter grain, again, we can check that off. You can see what that controls. So the easiest way is just to toggle these on and off, you know, slide the sliders all the way to the left and right to really see what that tab does. Then if you ever want to reset, just double click on the setting name and it will snap back to default. Next, we have the typography titles that are very, very simple to use. You literally drag those titles on and pretty much good to go from there. You can then customize in the inspector tab, just like before. You have all the different sections for the different parts of the title. So caption one, if you were to deselect that, you can see that does the left side. Caption two is the right side and the title is the main title in the middle. With each of those tabs allowing you to change the font, the colors, the sizing, and the individual positioning of that very tab. Again, if you do want to reset that, you just double click the title name and you will snap back. Then from there, you can use the rest of the three tabs to really dial in the look you're going for, with the last one being the drop shadow that allows you to have that shadow behind the text to so it's more visible on a brighter screen. Next, we'll move into the effects tab. And the difference here is that we'll be directly dragging the effects onto the clips as opposed to onto the timeline. These effects can give your footage that perfectly imperfect analog look with things like grain, film dirt, light leaks, and so much more creating a unique vibe with that retro aesthetic. But the first section that we'll dive into are the color looks. These are for individuals who don't have much experience of color grading, but still want to get some different styles. Just hovering over these allows you to see the style that it gives your footage. Then once you find one that you like, you can then drag that on and then begin customizing. So inside the inspector, the first tab we do have is this color effect controls. Now this is essentially just gonna allow you to get the colors that you're going for. So this midsummer color look gives it that really warm tones. If I was to toggle this off, you can see the difference it's making. Now in this first tab is where you can dial in those colors just so you can make it a bit more specific to you. Currently, the range is set to master. So it means any way you drag inside this box is going to control the entire image. So if I click and hold inside the circle, you're going to see the color difference that it's making. The further out that I go, the more saturated it's going to be. So keeping it quite close to the center is your best way to get realistic results. And then if you wanted to dive deeper, you can then change the range for master and then go into the shadows, midtones, and highlights. Clicking on those means all of the adjustments you make will only be in those areas. So you can see if I was to select the highlights, as I drag this wheel around, it's primarily only affecting the brighter areas. And the same thing would happen if I was to select the shadows. Once you've got the color you're looking for, we then have the prism controls. Now this gives it that slight halation effect. If we look in, especially where there's a contrast from black to white, you can see what the effect is doing there, giving it that cool prism look. Now we can of course adjust that, but with the prism, it's usually a case of less being more. So this being on the default at 0.001 is kind of your best bet. Next, we have the blur controls. And as you can see, if I toggle this on and off, there's quite a blur that is being applied. For me, it's a bit too strong as it looks like the footage is little out of focus. So I like to dial that back 
reducing the size of both the X and Y. That way we can reduce the quality of the super sharp cameras we do have nowadays and give your footage that old style look. And lastly, we have the adjustment controls if you want to fine tune any other parts of the image. The best way for you to really understand these is just playing around with the sliders, going back and forth and seeing what that option does and what it controls. From there, you can start to be more exact so you can get the look you're going for. And a pro tip, if you do want to make micro adjustments, the easiest way instead of using the gray circle and the slider here is actually to drag and hold on the numbers and you can make much more finer adjustments. And then moving on to the overlay effects, and this for me is my favorite part of the pack. They are simple as just dragging your effect onto the footage and you're pretty much good to go. There's so many different options for you to take your super sharp modern footage and turn it into a retro masterpiece. And just like everything we've gone over before, all of these effects can be customized inside the inspector. So this scratches effect actually starts with a black screen as it transitions in. So for this, I would actually turn off the animations just to ensure it doesn't happen. Next, I would check the 4K quality box, watching that through. For me, it's a little too apparent, a bit distracting. So the first thing I want to do is decrease the opacity so it's not so in your face. And that for me looks a lot better. And then from there, I would actually start to stack some of these effects so I can really get the look I'm going for. So I'd put a sprocket hole on, giving me that film roll effect on the left. Then I'll add the film mat, which is just going to give that border around my footage. And that for me looks pretty good at default. I would now adjust the sprocket hole, moving that slightly to the right so it's a bit more visible. And then the last step would be the film grain and then just dialing in the settings of how I want that grain to look. Now, if I was to toggle all these effects off, you can see there's a big difference in the style. And yes, we have achieved that goal of getting the vintage look, but depending on the machine you're using, you may suffer with slow payback. Now, this for me is working relatively okay, but not quite as smooth as I'd like it. So to ensure that I do get the full playback, this is where I would use a render cache. So to come up to the top, go to the playback menu, render cache, user, and then you'll see a red line here start to go blue. And once that is blue, it means your effects have fully rendered out. If it doesn't start going blue automatically, just right click on your clip, go to render cache fusion output, make sure this is on, render cache fusion effects filter. I leave it set to auto and it usually does everything for me. But if not, you can select the individual effects. And then once that's all blue, you have completely smooth playback. You can see I'm dragging back and forth and they're on zero job frames. Playing this again. Yep, we have full playback there. So don't be afraid to really be creative and stack a bunch of effects. As long as you allow some time to render the cache, you will be absolutely fine. And one last tip that's worth mentioning, once you've finished with a project, I do recommend going into render cache and actually deleting the old files. If you've exported the project and you know that you no longer need to keep going back and forth and watching it, these files will just unnecessarily hold space on your machine. So make it a habit to always clear your cache. And the last section we have are the transitions. Now these are super easy to use where you'll drag and drop the transitions between the clips and adjust the length of it by dragging the box here. The transition will then automatically adjust the length of time. And just like everything else in this video, you can fine tune and adjust the look of these inside the inspector tab until you get your desired result. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use the pack. And remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down below or head to our website emotionvfx.com. I've been JC and this has been your overview for the M-Style 8mm. See you in the next one.